I met Jingle Jared Gustad a couple years ago when he was uh, still running Jingle Punks. He's an amazing entrepreneur in the music industry. Music's another way to tell your story. Um, podcasting is an emerging medium. It's been around a long time, but it seems to be really hot right now. These guys have a very innovative business going on, new musical storytelling narratives. We got Dennis Quaid, we got uh, Jingle Jared. Ray Clark, if he's still able, is going to come moderate this panel. Scarlett, is she here? Scarlett's around? Right over there? We were missing you a little while ago. So glad you're here, too. Come on up and let's do this. Welcome them all. Hello, hello, hello. If you need anything, let me know. Go on, Mike. Yeah. Break it up. Break it up. Oh my god. Is this good? We got. We go no mic. Let's be a little loud. I think we can do it. You want a mic? We got. No, no, that's okay. Um, we're passing it around. We're around. All right, I'll start with you, Dennis. All right. Jared, it's good to see you. We've been through a lot together. It's great to see you, and we're going to get you to a bar so fast, you're going to be fine with that. I got one right here. Okay, good. Yeah, that's, that usually doesn't last long. So we also are asking you guys to stick around and play. You guys are amazing musicians. We're excited to hear you. I think we're going to do like a quick bar break and then back on. But I'm going to start with you. So you started Jingle Pugs. People invested in it. Everyone made a ton of money. You probably made the most. And it was an incredibly successful thing. You were like the biggest producer of music for TV shows, for movies, for brands. You won every pitch with a brand I think I ever saw you in. Um, and then you left three weeks ago. Now you're at, uh, you started something called Audio Up. You get 60 seconds. What is Audio Up? We are creating long form audio storytelling. The share of ear, as they call it right now, on streaming services is we are competing against popular music and right now everybody from Spotify to iHeartMedia to uh, Sirius, everyone wants to get people off the uh, recorded music train because they're paying royalties to them and they want to figure out an original content strategy. Somewhere along the line in the last few years of my business, we figured that there was easier ways to also distribute, create, and get people aware of music through long-form storytelling, the same way people use music videos in the 80s. Nobody is uh, using audio format and inherently, you know, uh, uh, audio device uh, uh, such as podcasting to launch music uh, in storytelling this way because of the complexity of music licensing. So working with amazing songwriters like Scarlett Burke and working with amazing storytellers and producers and talent like Dennis who has access to everybody under the stars, we're sort of creating a united artists of audio storytellers for the brand space. And is it audio only? How'd I do, by the way? Okay. Is that a lot of buzzwords? Right oh, shoot. Yeah. Uh, audio only? Oh, it starts as audio only, and okay. then I'm going to use a buzzword. It flywheels out to lots of other forms of entertainment because okay. Scarlett's project, before it even is going to iHeart Podcast, has been picked up by uh, Sony Pictures as a television show at, uh, through a label deal uh, where her soundtrack will come out. And as a brand new artist, this has never been done before. And with our previous project, Bear and a Banjo, stuff like this has never been done before, where your first window is not a window, it's a window to your ear. <laughs> and Dennis and I, when we first started, said we want to tell movies for you know, the theater of the mind. And hopefully, if they do well, it's a great proving ground for things that would go to other visual uh, formats and, you know, working with amazing agencies and people like Laura Carrenti from Giant Spoon, who saw the uh, upside in getting brands to explore the space and experiment in the space. We had a really breakout property almost out of the gate before this business started, which made our cause a lot easier when we started this thing. So you're the king of derivatives and connecting the dots. And we're going to come back to that about how you're doing it with this. But Dennis, um, we got to ask you, like, what makes podcasts something that's interesting to you creatively and as a business? Well, uh, when I came on to Bear and a Banjo, I had barely listened to a podcast before that. And uh, they've been growing exponentially. It was four times what it was the year before that. And um, I came on, we have this story, Bear and a Banjo, which is a true fiction of American music history. And it was just a blast to do it. It reminded me very much of 
the older days, which I hardly remember myself, yeah. with old radio, where yeah. you would have, you know, you'd listen to a play, and you'd, you'd really get involved in a story or a series. In fact, most of the television series that started in the 50s were really from old radio shows. Now we're going back the other way. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a series called S Scripts from the Drawer. Uh, I've got a script that I wrote uh, back about 20 years ago, sitting in the drawer. And uh, it's about Spade Cooley, and it's also like a true crime uh, story, uh, the O.J. story of the mid-20th century, and he was also the king of Western Swing and had the biggest TV show in L.A. at the time. And uh, so I'm going to be doing that. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton, a good friend of mine, has got another script in the drawer, which is about Floyd Collins, who was a... a cave explorer who got trapped underneath and uh, they were able to lower a microphone down to him even though they couldn't get to him and it was the biggest story between World War I and World War II. I love it. Actually after the Lindbergh kidnapping and the Lindbergh crossing of the Atlantic. The company's powered yeah. by the book of dust. Yeah. Just everything. But, but and honestly it's what's interesting. radio being in there it makes it I think it you know bringing it back to radio as yep. well and it's a uh, and from there, maybe they become movies, so you know. Yeah, you never know. And we There's recorded in a day at a table read, and essentially you take a, an amazing experience of A-list actors, him with all of his people he can call into a scenario to table read the script, serialize that as eight episodes, and all of a sudden you've brought a piece of IP back to life that is was sitting in a drawer. But that was the story of Jingle Punks. We took music that was worth nothing and created the platform for it by plugging it into content. What you're doing really is different than anything I've seen. It honestly has taken me like a week of studying up to even have a broad and a beginner's understanding of it. But it's it's incredible. So um, I think I would regret it if I didn't say, for on behalf of everyone, you're like one of our favorite actors ever. So let's give Dennis a... a <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Love you all. Yeah. Okay, just uh, shout out favorite role. Anyone have a favorite role? Breaking away. Breaking away. Not every Dream catcher. Dream catcher. Man Mike. Dreamscape. 43? Okay. 43. Mine oh, movie 43? Yeah, that's it. That's right. Mine's... <laughs> Mine's Cousin Eddie in the Vacation series. Aww. Yes, that was the other guy. <laughs> Wait, do you have a brother? Yes, I have oh. a brother. I have two, actually. <laughs> All right. He was amazing, too. Listen to my kidding, podcast. Obviously. You'll find out. All right. So uh, I've been told so many times, so many times that I have a, a face for podcast. And, um, <laughs> and Scarlett, I don't know if you hear that a lot also. I, don't, I have no idea. But tell us about how your podcast... They're keeping me off the slopes. Yeah, there we this go. This week. We're getting you. Yeah. All right, so tell us about how your podcast reflects on your career, even if fictionally. Um, well, there's a lot of life imitating art and vice versa. Sure. Um, the way that these songs came about, it's sort of like scripts in the drawer. They're songs on a shelf that don't necessarily get played on radio, but they sort of fit in that sound track space and the way I would discover new music as a kid growing up in the middle of nowhere in Texas was I would buy soundtracks from some of my favorite movies and um, and that way I kind of felt like I got to experience music that wasn't just getting put on Texas Panhandle radio <laughs> and um, so it's cool being able to now actually be in this and um, these songs that were not going to go anywhere have become a series and each song is an episode of the series and so it's really um, helped me find my voice as a, as That's a awesome. person. It is really different. So one of you explain like how the fictional podcast series actually unpacks an album and how that sequences. So yeah, the, the, the simple premise is working with the platforms that already exist, like the Spotify's and the Apple's. New episodes on Thursday that feature an original song at the end of every episode. New song drops on Friday. So if, you know, one of her songs like Poison is the foundation of the story in episode three, people get to be familiar with that song throughout the episode and then can buy or stream, buy, who buys music? They can stream the music the next day yeah, but Baron of Banjo was the very first podcast to launch a record, in fact. Yeah. 
And, and that for us, you know, even seeing a label take a flyer on that, the Bear and a Banjo one, if you've listened to it or not, I would suggest just check it out because it's 1.0 of what we intend to do. And we made a lot of uh, decisions on the fly as we were doing it. We're way more formatted about how we created, uh, how Scarlett is creating her podcast uh, because it's... Well, the, the thing that's similar about our two projects is that the, the music came first and it was just a series of great songs that labor, labels weren't necessarily picking up and I'm a songwriter and when Jared said, let's record these songs, I was like, I don't want to tour, <laughs> so I don't know why we would do this. And he said, let's record it and we'll figure it out. And so that has kind of been, I think, the driving force of having, having the music done first and it sort of tells the story. And at least with my project, like each episode sort of explains how the song becomes comes to life. And that's true in the Nashville writers' rooms is that it's very story-driven songwriting. And so listening to your work tapes, which are your voice memos, you listen back to how a song is made and conversations that take place. And there was a few light bulb moments that happened. I'm going to speak quick because we're almost out of time. The, when I was T-Bone Burnett, who introduced Dennis and I, said the most money he ever made in his career was the soundtrack of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Um, I realized that with this music, we had to, like Marvel, take our music as our IP bedrock and figure out how to tell stories around it. So music first, then add the writer on. And he was like, it was simple. I wanted to make this album of Americana stuff, but I didn't have a story to wrap around it. Lo and behold, the Coen brothers, you know, create this amazing piece of, uh, of work. So Bear and a Banjo very much is like that um, Oh Brother moment for our soundtrack. We had Bob Dylan evolved, T-Bone produced. But Scarlet's is more like Stapleton. We all know Chris Stapleton because of the breakout moment where someone else creates a platform for him, Justin Timberlake. In her podcast in the final episode, not to spoiler alert anything, the, the storyline is that someone goes from not being able to put gas in their car moving to Nashville, first episode, to being the biggest songwriter in the world. In the last one, it's a fairy tale, and it's pretty much like uh, working girls set in the Nashville writer's rooms. But where does that platform come from in the final episode? Well, iHeart, who is our uh, studio on this, is getting a major A-list artist. Think a Miranda Lambert, a Dolly Parton. In the final episode, that person sings the song, and it goes to radio the next day. So we're trying to basically... <laughs> Think of creative and cool things that go beyond. It, look, podcasting is an old new medium. It's amazing what Malcolm Gladwell's done, The Daily, all of these things, but they're, it's disposable content. We want to create evergreen content and launch other things off of it. So let's talk about brands real quick because you are the most, as far as brands go, the most collaborative brand-friendly guy I've ever known. Back in the day when the marketing arm would win maybe you know one out of five pitches, we brought you in five times, won five times, and then we knew it wasn't us. We knew it was you. So what, what does a great brand deal look like for Audio Up and what you're doing? So these three people equally have a resume, same as mine, but we are willing to weave brands into the story. You know, Scarlett has, did three of the biggest projects Jingle Punks ever did. If you saw the Nacho Cheese Fries song with Darren Chris last year, the Star is Born thing, she co-wrote that with me, but essentially won the project. Dennis, you know, being the insurance pitch person last year, we all come from the brand space and we all have had success in different areas, but realizing where our bread gets buttered is to work collaboratively with brands. And there's so many things we can't even tell you about that we're working on right now. Like you just did an amazing VO for a big car brand. She did something, the writing retreat for Zillow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading everyone's resume. Right, five, but Five seconds or less. What's your favorite podcast? Like, which one should we go out and you guys go check out? Oh, no, uh, my be. favorite murder. I'm, I'm into the crime one. You have one? Bear and a banjo. Bear and a banjo. Oh, my God. Shame. Malcolm Gladwell, awesome. broken record. All right, that's a good one. Um, well, then I'm going to go back to you. You guys are all great musicians. Do you have a favorite guitarist? And we'll end on that. Oh, my God. I mean, Jack White. And how do you stand up to Jack White? Would you say better? Equal or better. Well, equal or better. That's what I was... That's kind of... The great news is we get to judge. Dennis, you have one? Jamie James, the guitar player, and the Sharks. There we go. That's a great one in your band. All right. Hey, let's uh, give them a big thank you for coming over here. We're going to grab a quick drink, come back, and they're going to perform. Thank you all.